Right boys and girls, I'm just going to show you um, installation of the overdrive tail shaft onto the needle rollers. I've glued these uh, needle rollers in with the assembly lube, what I showed you earlier on. This stuff, it's quite sticky, so I'm hoping it'll hold the needles in. The spring that fits on the end of the lockout rail, I've already installed it into the, into the tail shaft. The planetary gears. Um, they, they locate inside the sun gear. So I'll pause the video and then show you the other side. Right on the other side, we've got the we've got the planetary uh, the sun the sun gear I think they call that, and the needle rollers have got to fit inside that location there, right inside there to to lock out the clutch. This is the spring that I mentioned to you earlier on, and it actually sits on the end of this pin here, the lockout rail. Keeps pressure on that to keep it up to that end. So what I decided to do after trial fitting etc etc I decided to fit the spring first into the hole because that's it's easier to find it in there than it is trying to locate it on the end of the shaft so I'm going to pause the video now uh, oh by the way uh, the gasket that I've made myself I've coated it both sides with this um, with the very sticky instant gasket it's very sticky um, permatex I think they call it permatex uh, it's turned out to be a good value for money because it stuck the gasket down nicely and it stops it from flopping down and making the job a difficult job even more difficult so that's where we are so far now this apparently is quite a tricky job I've reassembled it twice now and I've never had a problem uh, it went straight in now because I'm making a video you might find it'll go a bit wrong <laughs> as things usually do so there's where we are Wish me luck and we'll see how the video goes. I'll just find a stand for the camera. Right, we've got the stand for the camera. So you'll have to bear with me boys because this is how I'm making it. It may go wrong, it may go good. So what I'm gonna do is, is paste this rather heavy sun gear onto that pin there first, making sure it engages with the spring which is inside here and making sure that none of these needles drop down into here because that will stop it from going on. So here we go, we'll see how it goes. One's dropped out, I've heard it. I'll pause the video again guys and let me just put a bit more glue on. I'll try again guys. This went together very easily when I didn't make the video and I should have just left it together. <laughs> but there you go. Here we go. I'm going to have another go. I've done it twice so I should be able to do it a third time. Just bear with me. It's getting everything lined up so the, the bearings don't fall out. One's fallen out. You've got to actually inside the my glue's wearing off i'll need to so let me just pause the video again guys this is what's happening so you'll see it right we'll try again guys it, it's only a case of just lining everything up it's not it's not anything that's wrong with the input shaft or anything Right, we're in the first location now. Now what I do is turn the input shaft a little bit. The bearings, I don't think the bearings are dropping out right now. I'll just double check. No, those was, was all right. it's located on the sun gear now I just heard it click in so then it's just a case of turning things until you get it let me just pause the video guys 
Right guys, it's gone in. It's, it just wanted a little bit of rotation on the input shaft. I haven't used any elastic bands or sacrificial pieces of twine. There's a slight chamfer on the sun gear and if you can get the all the 12 bearings pointing into that into that chamfer then um, then the bearings won't drop out and then you can jiggle the input shaft till it matches up with the you can jiggle, jiggle both the end shafts until they match up with the planetary gears and as soon as they're lined up it'll just push straight on um, and that turns that turns very well now there's no bits dropped out in actual fact you can tell if one drops out because it won't bolt up because the planetary gears won't engage if there's a bearing in there so I'm just putting two screws in quite loosely just so that it doesn't fall apart on me so that's that's the overdraft unit back together now before I put the solenoid and things on I've obviously got to um, I've obviously got to test them so I'll need some help with that because uh, my expertise on in that department is zero as it was right so that's that's loosely put together now guys um, and uh, I'm making a bit clanky because the reverse side was catching and I haven't got any of these forks assembled at all these are in just loose because I wanted to tidy my bench up but uh, she turns freely there's something's just caught there while I've been jiggling it about one of the synchro rings is probably not lined up I'm quite happy that that's turning freely so that's the overdraft unit fully built up now oh done a fair old heavy lump as well so I don't know if you, what you've seen on that video but hopefully it's been a little bit useful to you you certainly don't need any elastic bands or sacrificial bits of twine if you get everything lined up the slight chamfer inside the sun it's difficult for me to I'll just draw you a picture of it. This is what I this is what I noticed on the sun gear. The entrance to the sun gear, if you can imagine that's the planetary gear there, that's that's the planetary gear there. That's inside the overdrive unit there. There's a slight chamfer before it goes into what the the needles roll around inside here like so. And you're putting the clutch in, the bearings are here on the clutch like so. 12 bearings all the way around obviously if you if you line the edge of the bearings the bearings are, say come to here there's a slight recess here and as long as that's lined up just a slight little taper that guides you in and then you can twist the planetary gears and the the shafts which will in turn just compress the bearings just a little bit because they're on a slight spring it's not very much of a spring it keeps them out so that just presses li lines it up so it tapers down once you've found that and it clicks into place, you'll get one little click. You can turn it again a couple of turns and then it'll, uh, it'll all fall into place. So that's where we are so far. That was my new core plug that I put in, by the way. Uh, as I say, that's pointing up, so it's only really to stop splashing coming up. And, and in actual fact, there wouldn't be no splashing anyway because the bearing covers the hole. So it's just a cover to stop dirt getting in, really. But uh, yeah. So I'm quite happy with that. I can turn that input shaft just from this end look with two fingers. So I'm, I'm quite sure everything's as it should be. So thanks for watching. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this quite difficult video to make. And I'm sorry if it didn't include everything right down to the last. But you saw it exactly as I did it. Thank you.